Hello class, and welcome to Unit 3, Energy. Now, Energy is a really exciting unit. We cover all sorts of things in it, and it really does a great job of explaining so many things with really, really simple results. Okay? And so I think you're going to uh, enjoy this unit because it's going to let us manipulate some really, really um, neat relationships with some very simple equations. Okay, it does a similar thing where with forces we were able to summarize some of our kinematics and, and connect them to the real world. Now with energy, we can summarize some of the things that we had in forces and, and make them easier to use. All right, we're starting off with 5.1 work, and you know what work is. Well, you're doing your homework or you're doing um, whatever kind of work you might think of, but in physics, Work means a very specific thing. So our mechanical work is very specifically a force applied over a distance. So if I push something with 5 newtons of force over 10 meters, that's me doing work on it. Okay, we have an equation for this. It is W work is equal to F delta D cosine theta. So we have our force, our displacement, and our angle theta. And we have units for this of joules, which is J, joules. And joules are named after a famous physicist, of course. So we have force delta d, and we have our cosine theta. Now, theta, hopefully, I think we've worked with this angle before, but in this case, theta means, um, so theta is the angle between the force, f, and the movement, delta d. So, I can be applying a force, and it might not be the same uh, direction as the movement itself. Okay, and you can see the picture to the right here. We have a man pulling his luggage, and you can see he's applying a force up on this angle, whereas the, the luggage itself is just moving horizontally like this. So you can see that there's some angle theta between those two. Okay, now we do have a special case. That's this next line here. The special case is when theta is equal to zero. When theta is equal to zero, that means that the force and the displacement are in the same direction, which means that there's no angle in between them. Okay, so in this case, our equation simplifies. W is just equal to F delta D, because the cosine of zero is equal to one. So that cosine theta just disappears. Okay. So we're going to be doing some, uh, some examples here, and I'm promising you that work and energy, they're going to be really, really useful and interesting. For now, though, we're just going to calculate them, and you have to trust me that it'll, it'll be useful. So first off, how much mechanical work does a person do on a shopping cart if they apply a force of 25 newtons in the forward direction and displace the cart 3.5 meters in the same direction? So we have work is equal to F delta D, Remember, this is our special case where theta is equal to zero. So I don't need to do cosine theta. So F delta D, we have our force is 25 newtons, and delta D is 3.5 meters. And this gives me a value of 88 joules. Perfect. Now, I'll just point out, I could have left in the cosine theta part of the equation, which would have been cosine of zero degrees and that cosine zero just becomes one. So we get the same answer. Okay? If you prefer to just always use the full equation, F delta D cos theta, that's fine. I usually do that myself. Okay, the next problem here says a curler applies a force of 15 newtons on a curling stone and accelerates it from rest to a speed of eight meters per second in three and a half seconds. Assuming that the ice surface is level and frictionless, how much mechanical work does the curler do on the stone? So we have our same equation. Again, they're in the same direction. There's no angle. So we have W equals F delta D. Okay, that's our work. Now we have the force, 15 newtons, but delta D we're going to have to work for. Right, we, we don't have delta D. But we have, let's see, 
vi was equal to zero. Our final velocity is equal to eight meters per second. Um, and our delta t is equal to three and a half seconds. So we can use an equation to relate all of these. That equation is delta d is equal to vi plus vf over 2 times delta t. Okay, so we'll just um, plug in our values here. We have 0 plus 8 over um, 2 times 3.5 and this gives us a value of 4 times 3.5 which is equal to 14 point zero meters. So there's our delta D and now we can go back and, and do W equals F delta D which is 15 times 14 that's our delta D and it gives us 2.10 times 10 to the 2 newtons. Or sorry, not newtons, uh, 10 to the 2 joules. There we go. That's our work. So those are two examples where there was no angle between them. This next example says work done when force and displacement are in different directions. So we want to calculate the mechanical work done by a custodian on a vacuum, uh, vacuum cleaner if the custodian exerts an applied force of 50 newtons on the vacuum hose and the hose makes a 30 degree angle with the floor. There's a picture to the right here to help you see what's, what's going on. The vacuum cleaner moves 3 meters to the right on a level flat surface. So you can see our displacement is to the right, our force is up at an angle of 30 degrees, so we have work is equal to F delta D cosine theta, which is equal to 50, that's our force, delta D is 3, and cosine of 30 degrees. We put in all those numbers and we get a final value of 1.30 times 10 to the joule, 10 joule, uh, 10 to the 2 joules, sorry. And notice I'm using scientific notation for my answers. Um, I could have just said 130 joules as well, but this is, um, this is a good way of writing our answers. Okay, second page. We've got a few more special cases. Right? Remember, special cases are where something strange happens or something different. So the first one here, it says, Ron Beer wears his backpack as he walks forward in a straight hallway. There's a picture of him there. He walks at a constant velocity of 0.8 meters per second for a distance of 12 meters. How much mechanical work does Ron Beer do on his backpack? Well, notice that the backpack has a force upwards and a force downwards. Okay. There's no horizontal force because he's walking at a constant speed, so he's not accelerating. But his movement is horizontal. So the forces are at 90 degrees to his movement. Okay, so here I could say that this angle here is 90 degrees. So he's applying this force upwards at an angle of 90 degrees. So let's just put that in our equation and see what happens. We've got work is equal to F delta D cosine theta. And so we have our applied force. Um, well, we don't even know what the applied force is. It's going to turn out we don't need to. But let's just say here, it's the applied force times delta D, which is a distance of 12 meters, times the cosine of 90 degrees. That was our angle here. Okay. And here's where things fall apart, because you'll know the cosine of 90 degrees, that's equal to zero. So this whole thing, it means that he's done zero work, zero joules of work. And that is true. That's what happens. The, the, the work is only done by force in the same direction as his movement. Okay? It needs to be in the same direction. So here his force is straight up. His movement is horizontal. They're perpendicular to each other, which means none of the force that he's doing is in the direction of his movement. So he's doing no work by walking this way.
Okay, so um, we'll look at another example here where something different happens. It says, how much mechanical work is done on a stationary car if a student pushing with a 300 Newton force fails to displace the car? So the student is pushing with 300 Newtons. So we've got work is equal to F delta D cosine theta. Well, in this case, he's, you know, let's say that theta is zero degrees. But the problem is there's no displacement. The car doesn't move. He's pushing, but the car doesn't move. So here, delta D equals zero. Therefore, our work is equal to zero. There's no, there's no work done. So again, both of these are examples where no work actually gets done. And you see, I, I've sort of done the equations so you can see it. But as soon as you see a problem where it says the force is perpendicular to the movement, like with Ronbier, you know that no work is going to be done. Same with if the, if the object doesn't move at all, you know that no work is done. And you don't even have to do the equations. OK. This last special case here, it says a shopper pushes a shopping cart on a horizontal surface with the horizontal applied force of 41 newtons for 11 meters. The cart experiences a force of friction of 35 newtons. And we want to calculate the total mechanical work done on the shopping cart. Um, now, this, I guess, isn't exactly a special case. It's just a bit different, because now we have two forces. And we want to find the total amount of work. So we can look at this two different ways. Either we could just add, uh, find the net force on this object. We could do the net force on the object times its delta d cos theta. That would give us a result. I'm going to look at it a bit differently. First, I'm going to look at the work done by the, um, the shopper. So I'm going to say the shopper here. Let's find out how much work the shopper is doing. So her work is F delta D cosine theta, which is equal to, um, so the force is 41 newtons that she's applying, times 11 meters cosine. And let's say that she's pushing it straight forward, so that our angle is 0 degrees here. So this gives us that the shopper is doing um, this much work, 41 times 11, so we get 451 joules. Okay, 451 joules, and um, that's how much work the shopper is doing. That's great. Now we can look at the um, the cart, uh, the friction. Now, how much work does friction do? Because friction is the other the other force on this thing. So friction. Likewise, it's doing work e is equal to F delta D cosine theta. OK, and we'll plug in our numbers here. So it says it's doing 35 newtons of force over the same distance, 11, cosine. And now my angle, well, if I draw a little free body diagram to the left here, this was my applied force. Here's my friction, which we can say it's at 180 degrees to the movement. So cosine 180 degrees. And you might know that cosine 180 gives us negative 1. So our, n an our answer ends up being negative. So we get negative 385 joules. There we go. And so if I want my total, well, I can do the work from my shopper um, plus the work from my friction. This gives me 451 joules minus 385 joules, and that gives me a total of 66 joules done. So that was my total amount of work. So I could call that W net, my network. Excellent. So you can see that we solved it this way. As I pointed out, we could also have just found the net force first and multiply that by the distance. It would have gotten us the same answer here. OK, great. So there's one more topic. Um, and uh, that is graphing work done. So when we graph the work being done here, well, there's three pictures. This first picture shows 
a constant amount of force being applied over a distance. So you see we've got force on the y-axis, distance on the, on the x-axis, and you can see that over this whole duration we've got a constant amount of force up here being applied. And if we want to find our work, well work is f delta d, or f delta d cos theta, but let's say that in, in these problems the angle is all zero degrees. So w is equal to f delta d. Well you can see we have f here, delta d here, and so to find work it's just the area of this box. So in this case we can say that um, the work is equal to the area under the curve. So you can take the area of that rec rectangle. So we could say base times height. Something like this. Work is equal to base times height. Okay, and we have the second picture, the same thing, but we have now positive work, just like in the first one, and negative work. That's where our force is in the opposite direction of movement. And you can see it works the same way. We have negative force times our displacement, and it'll give us a negative amount of work done. So um, it's the same story here. So uh, we can say when F is negative, the area is negative. Great. Now we've got one last um, situation here, which is where the force is changing. And this is kind of cool, because we don't deal with changing force or changing acceleration much in this class. But this picture shows us that we can actually do it um, fairly easily the same way, where if the force, let's say, is increasing from this point zero over the amount of distance until we have a much larger force by the end, well, still we just want to take the area under the curve. That's going to be our work. This is our work here. And to get the area, well, it's a triangle. So we can just either take the, so we can say work is equal to one-half times base times height here, because it's a triangle. But another way of looking at that is we can find our average force, right? And then we can just multiply um, that by the whole displacement. You can see the area of that rectangle is, is the same value as, as the area of that triangle. So we could also say W is equal to the average force, F average delta D. And both of these are true. And the second one is actually very useful that um, even if I had a graph of work being done that looked crazy, very squiggly, like anything like this, doesn't matter. Sorry, if this is my force being done over some distance, well, I can still find the work. It's going to be the area underneath the curve here. And there's positive and negative sections. And another way to do that is I could find the average force over that whole duration. And it's still going to be F average delta D. It doesn't matter what the force is doing over that whole duration. Our work is still going to be that product. OK, that's the whole lesson. Um, try out the homework. Uh, I hope that actually applying it will, will make a lot more sense. But uh, this idea of work we're going to be using a lot. So get nice and comfortable with it and enjoy. Thank you.